When I first joined and decided to kind of jump in, I was really, it was kind of one foot in, one foot out. And I remember being out in the field. I went to my first home, my second home, my third home. And it was by the end of that first week, I made $3,500. And I was like, wow, this is amazing. (laughs) I was like, sign me up, you know? Um, And I fumbled a lot. I made a lot of mistakes. One of the biggest questions that I get from people is, how did you get here? How are you so successful in what you do? And to be honest, it's because I failed. Yeah over and over and over again. Hey, welcome back to the CA Power Players podcast. We have a special guest in all the way from Oregon, probably the first person I've ever met from the state of Oregon. Please welcome to Missouri. Tyra Hamilton. <laughs> What's going on, you guys? Thank yes. you for having me. Thank you. And I got to get you out to Oregon. We got to get you, you some Oregon duck gear. Yes. You got to rock the green and yellow. Yes. <laughs> yes. I need, yeah, Lauren, she may not love that with, you know, being a Duke fan, but that's all right. Uh-oh. I'll rock it. No big deal. <laughs> right. You got track and field. You've got Oregon ducks. You got, you know, yeah. All kind of stuff, I guess, <laughs> that I don't know about, you know. Um, what, the reason I wanted to bring you in, and I appreciate you being here, uh, is you're doing some big things. You're super impressive. She's also really humble, so give her some love in the comments today, okay, mm. as we post this and share this out to the world. Um, you are averaging 40, 50 grand a month with what you do, and most people are not. And there's a lot of agents just like you that are watching, and you're like, man, dude, I would love to do 40, 50K a month. Um, so I would love to walk through your story, mm-hmm. what you've done, how you've got to where you are, because yeah. you're super impressive, and really want to share something with those out there that... Um, Maybe aren't there yet, but they've got a cool story or they're working through their story and they want to become Tyra Hamilton when they grow up, you know? Hey, that's that's a good. No, I'm kidding. (laughs) Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, Well, you know, the funny thing about it is I never wanted to be in the insurance space. Mm. I come from a background of dance. I taught that for 14 years. I did cheerleading um, and promotional marketing. That's kind of, you know, I'm a people person. I love talking, but never did i think that insurance was going to be you know the yes. spot that i landed um and when i first joined and decided to kind of jump in i was really it was kind of one foot in one foot out and okay. i remember being out in the field i went to my first home my second home my third home and it was by the end of that first week i made thirty five hundred dollars and i was like wow this is amazing. Yeah. <laughs> I was like, sign me up, you know? Um, and I fumbled a lot. I made a lot of mistakes. One of the biggest questions that I get from people is, yeah. how did you get here? How are you so successful in what you do? And to be honest, it's because I failed Yeah. over and over and over again. Um, wow. Growing up with six brothers and mm. having, yeah, I'm, I'm the middle. I have three older, wow. three younger, um, and I'm right in the middle everybody's really competitive, you know, um, whether they're doing sports or in their careers. And for me, I jump into things and, you know, I have that little competitive spirit to me. And I wanted to kind of jump in and just be like, I've got this, I can go, I'm gonna hit the ground running. And I fell, I I didn't fall Mm. once, I fell twice. Um, You know, I've, I've moved around with different companies trying to find my landing. And I remember my first year in, I did a quarter of a million. And I was like, this is amazing. Wow. And I thought, I'm going to soar. I want to take it to the yep. next level. And when I tried to do that, I fell. I completely fell. And it was like a, a humbling moment for me mm-hmm. because I think one of the biggest mistakes that people make in the industry is they'll go, okay, I made 20, 30, 40 grand this month. I'm qualified to teach you how to do what I can do. Yep. And people do that so often. And I think that's what I, I did. I said, you know what? I did this. I'm going to show you how to do it. Mm. And one of the most humbling things about being a leader that I had to learn the hard way is you actually have to listen 70% of the time wow. and actually teach 30%. Mm, that's good. Oftentimes people say, follow me, do what I do, and you'll be successful. Yes. But everybody has a different story coming in. So when you watch somebody yeah. come in and they say, hey, you know, I'm not really good at sales. I've never done it before. I only want to do this part time. You have to be able to kind of take that in and, and teach them based on 
their ability, their, you know, learning level, whatever it is that they want coming in, not always you're going to find that perfect person that wants to work six or seven days a week and they just want to hit the ground running. You have to be able to kind of work with different people. Um, I think one of the biggest things that caused me to struggle in this industry going, you know, I went from being captive to non-captive and I really, I felt like I want to own my own book of business. I want to be an agency. I want to build this great team and I want them to duplicate everything that I'm doing. Um, And I think one of the things that kind of humbled me with all of that is I needed to be honest with myself and with my team. One of the things Mm. that I've always struggled with is having ADHD. And I never wanted to tell people that. I looked at it like- Why not? It was this thing that you almost feel like embarrassed about. Like people look at you like there's something wrong with you. And I think having ADHD, one of the struggles that I had is being able to stay focused and to stay on track. And I was all over the place. I had stuff written down here, stuff written over here, and I just couldn't keep in line with that. And Mm. so I had to make changes and set up structure for myself. Yes. Um, I can't expect or rely on other people to have structure and guidance if I'm not. And so when I started to change those things and work through those things, I didn't allow having, you know, ADHD. I didn't allow that to hold me back. I didn't use that as a crutch and say, well, I struggle because of this. Yes. I had to find a way to overcome that and not let it be something that held me back. And it's crazy because the more I started to talk about it, the more I actually learned how many other people, how many adults actually struggle with having ADHD. You know, I'm a single mom with two kids and Mm. both my children do. So you can imagine my house is like a zoo with the three of us just bouncing off the walls. Um, (laughs) But once I realized that building that structure and having something in place for myself, I realized, okay, now that I have something for myself in place, I can turn around and teach that to other people to do the same thing. But if I can't duplicate myself, how am I going to expect other people to just jump in line, mm. you know, and, and do 40 to 50,000 in a month? Yeah. Yeah. So. That's so good. Um, here's one thing I want to go back to. You mentioned several things I want to touch on, by the way. Okay. Right. How, and, and also, I want to add, like, I think she lied to me before we started. OK, I'm going to put it out there. <laughs> she <laughs> said she said this was her first podcast ever. And I think she's got her own radio show or TV show. (laughs) She's already in like Hollywood or something. No. She's been on like Joe Rogan's podcast and she didn't tell us. No, he's lying. (laughs) Right? Give her some crap for that, man. I'm just kidding. Uh, You're doing amazing, by the way. Seriously. So, so she looks so comfortable, right? She's doing so awesome. Um, You're confident. You have charisma. You're tough. Competitive, as you mentioned. Where does that come from? Before we get to like your first week and your first year and that kind of stuff, where does that come from? Uh... Growing up with six brothers, I think, you know, they used to pick on me. And I, of course, I was very dramatic. I used to like <laughs> throw myself against the wall if one of my brothers pushed me just so that they would get in trouble. Uh-huh. Um, they used to do all kinds of like crazy boyish things. Like I already, I've had conversations with your dad. So I already know that you were probably, yes. you know, yes, to torturing your sisters growing up. And I think- um, They deserved it, but yes. Yeah. <laughs> Um, But I had to learn to kind of have tough skin. Um, And I think a lot of that came from, you know, me growing up as a single mom with two kids. I also grew up in a two parent household. Mm -hmm. And I think it's really important for people to understand because on one side, you have mom trying to do the best that she can raise six kids. And then you've got dad who's very successful and Mm -hmm. there's a little bit of the resentment. And so people don't realize that as children, we actually oftentimes, we put some of that on ourselves. We put the guilt, um, we put the pressure on ourselves to do better than what our parents did. Why? Because I did too. Yeah. I think it's because some of the stress that parents have that they even tried to hide or hold back, Mm -hmm. we look at it like we don't want the same thing for ourselves. We don't want Mm. them to struggle. And it, it also could be the, the caretaker um, in, in myself. Yep. I'm one of those people where I watched my mom struggle for years. And yep. I think that that's what's developed me to jump into a, a caretaker role. Mm-hmm. Um, but at the same time, even though that's a good quality, I think that it's also something that's hindered me. 
Yeah. And I say that because when you're so busy trying to take care of other people, but you don't take care of yourself, you hurt yourself. Yeah. And that's one of the things that it's not just in this industry. I failed at so many different things in life because I wasn't taking care of myself. Yeah. Um, and it's it's really important, you know, like when you hop on a plane and the flight attendant tells you they go through like the whole, you know, I don't listen anymore, but they yes. talk about putting <laughs> the mask over your face before you put it over a yep. loved one or a child. And I never understood that because as a mom, I'm like, no, I yeah, want to make sure. Ridiculous. Yeah. I'm like, I want to make sure my kid is breathing. And I never understood that. And I actually, I asked one day, I'm like, I wonder why they say that. Mm -hmm. And it's because you cannot take care of that child. You can't provide for them mm -hmm. if you don't take care of yourself first. So they always say, you've got to put the mask over your face before. And so it's the same thing with, with business and with life. You yeah. know, I had to start taking care of myself first so that I could be a good leader, a good example for people. Yeah. So that makes a ton of sense. Uh, yeah. You also, your first week, you had a ton of success, 3,500 bucks, which is super rare. There's a lot of agents that are new that will watch this that haven't done that yet. Mm -hmm. What did you do to get off to a fast start? What did that first week look like? I was hungry. Um, and I think I was also eager and anxious to learn. Mm -hmm. Um, I think one of the things that a lot of agents struggle with when they first get started is they get overzealous. They're like, I need to have 15 carriers. I want to have this, mm. this, and this. And it's more so you've got to learn to crawl before you can walk. Yes. And a lot of people jump into the industry saying, well, I watched a podcast and this person made $10,000 in their first week. Yeah. And they instantly want that success. They're like, yes. I want to do what they did. And they don't realize that that person yeah, maybe they did do $10,000 in their first week, mm -hmm. but maybe they also just got lucky. And can yeah. they show you that they're doing that every single week now? Sure. Or do they have those, you know, inconsistencies? So I think for me, um, I wasn't afraid to fail. I kind of, I laughed at myself. I mm -hmm. went into a home and I, whew, if there was ever a time to activate e &O insurance, I pretty <sighs> much did that because I didn't know what I was doing. Um, you know, luckily yes. I had some guidance to, to be able to do that. But mm. I think once I did it the first time and I walked away knowing that not only did I help and protect this family, yeah. but I made some good money while doing it, I yes. wanted to just keep going. And so that's kind of what fueled me a little bit. I love that. Yeah. And what were you, like your first week, first year, you did 250K your first year. What, what were you focused on doing? How did you get in front of people? What did you sell? Um, so I started out just the only thing that I knew was whole life and term. And that's okay. when I realized my brother has been in the industry for over 11 years. And wow. um, he kind of taught me everything I know about advanced markets. But when I realized there was a whole new world outside of just selling final expense, term, mortgage protection, I yep. jumped on it. Um, but when I first got going, I think for me, it was just, okay, the biggest sales week that I had ever had, I did $18,000 in a week. And I was like, Dang. I want to try to beat that. And so it yeah. became a competition within myself. I didn't care about what anybody else was doing. Um, it was about how high, how hard can I push myself to keep going? So yes, yes. Um, why, what about advanced markets stood out to you? Cause that's something you focus on a lot now that you work through. Yeah. Um, so don't cry. Don't make me cry. Okay. Um, <laughs> Try, not to. Try not to. In 2019, I had a cancer scare. Um, I had a lot of pain oh. in my lower back and I had gone to the doctor over and over and they were saying, oh, you know, it sounds like a herniated disc. And I'm like, I'm in my 30s. What, what do you mean? I'm wow. too young for that. And yeah. I demanded an MRI. And within one week of that, they threw me into emergency surgery and they found two large cysts on my ovaries that were half the size of tennis balls. Um, they removed it and it was benign. The doctor said, had it been malignant, I wouldn't be here. Mm. And three months later, my mom got stage two breast cancer, three months after my surgery. And for me, it was a scary thing because not only did my mom grow up in a time growing up without a mom where she wasn't really shown how to save money, how to the importance of having life insurance. Mm -hmm. um, it was kind of like that trigger for me where it was like more people need to be educated about it. 
yeah. especially in the African-American community. Um, and so for me, it's really important to build generational wealth, mm -hmm. teach my kids how to um, grow their money and emulate it so that they can pass it on one generation to the next. So that was one thing that was really important for me is to build that generational wealth. And then on the other side, educating a lot of people about their retirement. A lot yes. of people don't realize how important it is to not just rely on social security. When my mom got cancer, you know, she had to go through chemo and radiation for an entire year. And of course she kicked cancer's butt, but nice. um, awesome. she wasn't working for a year. And had she had the knowledge and education of understanding that, hey, there's something called a living benefit within life insurance, yeah. you know, mm. she would have been more protected. So for me, it was just wow. about getting out there and educating more people. Yes. Yeah. Which is awesome that you do that. Um, what advice before we I, I want you to share how they can get in touch with you and work with you more and, and just learn from you. Um, what advice would you give for an agent out there that. Let's say I normally ask about like a new agent, but let's just say there's agents out there that are that they've had some success, but they're kind of bored. Um, and this advanced market things kind of interest them. They're like, mm -hmm. wait, there's a better way. There's a different way. There's a bigger way. You know, yeah, I don't have to just average like six, six, eight hundred bucks to sell like I can average more, you know? Yeah. Um, well, the first thing is level up, sit down and write down all of the things that you want mm -hmm. and whatever path you're on are you how close are you to getting to that goal so if you sit down and you're like i really want to buy a brand new porsche and you yeah. look at it i threw that out there because that's, he's got a really nice car that's uh, a great goal, by the way. <laughs> great goal. Uh, yesterday uh, yes i sat in his car it's nice <laughs> um you. but if you if there's certain things that you want sit down and write it out and look at the path that you're on and go am i going to get to that goal how mm. long is it going to take me to get there one thing that people don't realize, if you're anything like me, when you came into this industry, you didn't really want to do life insurance. Like you never looked at that as a vision or an area that you wanted to go. I'll tell you right now, getting your life insurance license, whether you currently have it or you're wanting to get it, that is a vehicle. Mm -hmm. It is literally a vehicle to take you wherever you want to go. And that's the most important thing for people to understand. It's not something that you have to do for the rest of your life. But if you want to get into the real estate, you want to buy and sell houses, you want to whatever it is, this right here is a vehicle. You want to start up your own dance company. You want a medical spa. Yeah. Doesn't you start here because yes. this literally is that jumping off point for you. Um, yeah. When it comes to the advanced market stuff for people that, you know, like you're saying, they kind of get stuck. Mm -hmm. um, I'm with my agency. We're more a la carte. So we've yes. got people that are doing the Medicare, um, which is great, great residual. And it's a great way to actually keep your your clients, which is important for people to know and understand coming in. Yeah. Um, and then, of course, adding more to your, your portfolio so that when you sit down with one client and mm -hmm. you might only be getting them mortgage protection, final expense, whatever it is, yep. you can now say, hey, by the way, I sell Medicare, let's look at your retirement portfolio. Mm. And from there, you can go and collect referrals and then you can get their family taken care of. Yes. One of the things that I always say to a client every single time that I get off the phone with them, whether it's in person, I say, you know, I congratulate them on setting it up. But I also remind them that you don't buy life insurance because you're going to die. Yeah. You don't. It's not about you. No. You buy life insurance because the ones you love are going to live. Mm. And so it's really important to That's get powerful. people. Yeah, it's important to get them to understand that that concept. Um, and then you can segue into the other things yep. as far as retirement and all so of that. Good. So yeah. good. If someone wants to learn from you or reach out to you, how would they go about doing that? No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> good luck. Call no. Cody. No. There you go. <laughs> um, so I will give you my direct line. Um, you... Oh, wow. Okay, cool. I know. Um, so 503-506-8459. I love it. Yep. And then you can also go to workwithforeverlegacy.com and you can fill out um, the page and reach out to me if you want to join the team. Work with Forever Legacy. Is, is it Forever Legacy the name? Mm -hmm. That's a great name too. Yeah. Oh my gosh. I well, love that. I, 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 you know, it came to me when I thought of my kids and I'm like, I want to leave behind a legacy. So yes. 
Yeah. So awesome. Thank you for being on the podcast. Yeah, Amazing job thank today. Thank you for having me. You're phenomenal. Seriously. Yes. If you're not following Tyra Hamilton from Oregon, please do so. Thanks for listening to Power Players Podcast. And we'll see you on the next interview. Hey, if you enjoyed this, I got another one you're going to love. It's right there. Click on it. See you in there. Hey, it's 2022. Stop freaking chasing people, man. Like, I'm going to teach you right now a six-step process to attract people in your life versus chasing everyone. Most individuals, they work, work the warm market. They chase unlicensed job boards to recruit. Like, if you think about insurance, you either...